Well, salutations, dear viewers. You're on with Nexon of the Vast Nexus, and welcome to the second installment in Script Welder's Deep Sleep series, Deeper Sleep. Without any further ado, let's get into it. And as a reminder, a link to Blue Maximus Flashpoint, through which you can play this game, will be in the description. Yes, thank you. Moving on. I've always wanted to experience a lucid dream. A dream in which you are awake. A dream in which you can be alone. You can be anyone and do anything. Sorry about that. But something went wrong, and I ended up having a terrible nightmare. Before I woke up, I encountered monsters that wanted to hurt me. Uh, I know that there is, like, a game loss condition if the shadow people catch up with you, but that's a bit presumptuous. I don't think that they were a part of my dream. It felt like they came from... outside. From the depths. Well, we're getting a bit young again, aren't we? The nightmare didn't fade away like I thought it would. I couldn't stop thinking about it. What if it was real? I became obsessed with it. I don't know why. Maybe I just wanted to prove myself wrong. So I went to a local library to see if there were any past records of dreams similar to mine. Are we to assume, then, that this takes place in a time before internet? Because why... why would you go to a library? Cold night outside. I just arrived. Ecology books. More books about the human psyche. Nietzsche quotes, poorly translated. Nothing interesting. Nothing about lucid dreaming. Psychology of dogs. Yes, that is a thing. That we can't even... Not what I'm looking for. A novel by someone called L... Dak or Doc? Like, that That doesn't look like a proper O. Physics, thermodynamics. The whole universe was in a hot, dense state. Piece of paper. As long as you don't know you're dreaming, you're safe. Oh, it's the hills again. You know, the hills of the Netherware. A dusty old book, but all of its pages are blank. So that hasn't changed. Now, this particular installment has collectibles. Yeah, that doesn't look the least bit suspicious. Give me the thing. So, yeah, right down there, that's one of the collectibles. I'll read it all once we have it all assembled together. Now, my rationality behind why this doesn't work practically as a scare is that, oh, but it's glowing eyes. It's going to be one of the shadow people. In this proximity, if they were hostile, I'd already be dead. And it wouldn't just be standing there staring at me. Oh, look! Because I find it humorous. Deja vu. <laughs> oh no, I take refuge in audacity. Anyway. Key. So this is different. I have a suspicion. 
Yep. Bert! It's been a while since I've run this, I don't entirely remember what does what. You again? Why have you returned? This place is dangerous! Who are you? My name is not important. I am a traveler, like you. You're a real sleeping human? Yes, as crazy as it sounds, I'm as real as you are. What are you doing here? Currently, I'm hiding. Your actions have drawn their attention. Can't you wake up? Maybe I can. Maybe I just don't want to. Maybe whatever life I had out there is even worse than this. It's none of your business. Why would anyone want to be here? Well, you are here, aren't you? You had your chance to escape, yet you've returned. This place lures you, and then it consumes you, like a swamp. I have some categorical questions about that logic. Okay, I think that's a repeat dialogue option. You know what, I'll just hit it anyway. What are you doing here? Okay, yeah, so. So, this is not only my dream. Dreams are like personal pockets, but only to a certain level. At this depth, it's one big world for everyone. Much like reality. This depth? One big world? Think of it as a river that joins with another river, and so on. At one point, they all fall into the ocean. Are there other travelers here? This realm is huge. You can find travelers from time to time. For example, have you met Felicity? She lives in the attic. Don't go there. She's dangerous. Yeah, I'd put a contraction there. I understand you're trying to get your point across a dangerous, but yeah. Why is Felicity dangerous? Because she's crazy. That's why. She's been here for too long. She couldn't wake up and she just lost it. Watch out for her. How long has she been here? Years lost both her mind and her humanity. How long have you been here? None of your business. I'm not crazy if that's what you suggest. Is that a repeat dialogue option? Who are you? Okay, so. Um, you again? Have we met? Not in person. However, last time I left you a recorded message which led you to the lighthouse. You shouldn't have come back here. I had to know if this was real. Well, now you know, but they won't let you reach the lighthouse this time. Can you help me? No, I've risked my life for you once. This time, you're on your own. Stay hidden. If they sense you, they'll find you. I don't know how to wake up. Of course you don't know. People spend years preparing for this, learning, practicing. I had no idea about all of this. So you've jumped into a pool that's too deep without even checking, and you haven't learned to swim. Now leave me before they find us. I will go away if you help me. <sighs> Since you've killed one of them, they will hunt you. They've probably already blocked all the ways out. This means you can only go deeper. Deeper? How? And why would I? Because they might not look for you there. And sometimes you have to bounce off the bottom to reach the surface. That's only when you're talking shallow water, my man. Um, don't, don't work so well in the ocean. He literally just likened this to an ocean. So I get the sense that he might be trying to screw us. Because they might not look for you there. And sometimes you have... Okay, yeah, no. Yeah. And what about when I get deeper? I don't know. I've never been deeper than I am now. Hopefully you will find something to bounce off. So... Thank you. You're welcome. Now if you don't have any other questions, please leave as promised. I've killed one of them with light. And that's exactly why you should go away. I don't want to be anywhere near you when they get you. Okay, now there's a piece of the thing he has. But I have to find... 
the dialogue option. There we go. Can you tell me more about them? No, stop talking about them. They can sense it. You just don't talk about them. That's basically the first rule of all travelers. Where is the note? There we go. But who are they? The shadow people. But well, we shouldn't talk about them. Here, take this scrap of paper. It might shed some light in the matter. Thank you, that's all I wanted. For the collectibles. You hack. And there's another little one. Yeah, you gotta pixel hunt if you want all the scraps. It, it's a thing. Uh, we don't have a code this time. And it's still locked. So we can now explore the darkened environment. Literal deer in the headlights. Go figure. Hmm, I almost missed that. I just saw a little thing look like a piece of charcoal in the fireplace. Pointer. Eight five eight two. Let's see if I remember that this time. But wait, that's the way I came in. So what? I came in and it was in here, and then oh, another piece of paper. My God, it doesn't help that this. I have to like manually upscale this, and it's a little, little clumsy. Oh, that shadow effect's actually half decent. I mean, it's actually good, but this is a, a pixel art thing with a fixed perspective. It's... tucked a little page note. There it is. I mean, look at that. You can literally count the pixels. It's probably about 12. Handle is stuck. Sewing needle. Another piece of paper. Old toys. Oh. Now I have a plushy tiger. If you're coming right off of the first Don't Sleep uh, game, you'll remember that little Cody is lost without his plushy tiger. Now, the interesting part is even though this one creates the shadow people as a more imminent threat, we don't actually encounter them over the course of playing it. The collectible thing instead becomes more so the focus. No, not that. Whoop. Oh no, bro. Uh, is he starting to run? Yoink. Yoink. That's l that's barred, basically. Stop it. Who doesn't like a walk in the woods? That one was fairly obvious. I don't understand the mindset of a scarecrow. 
They are all too frequently just used as perches by the damn birds. You know, I do appreciate point-and-clicks to let you collect items when you wouldn't logically have any use for them, because there are plenty of old-school point-and-clicks where basically you couldn't take the item from the thing you interacted with until you knew you needed it, because that made logical sense. But it's a video game, and that basically forced endless backtracking looking for that one thing you needed that you missed because you didn't even realize you needed it. Well, this is very the eight pages. That just blends. How far are we? Oh, only five left. There was a key in the pot. Seems to go deep. <laughs> hey, Sarlacc, there's no Boba Fett here. God, the fact that that even qualifies. Pile of rotten bags, pile of flour, bag with a hole, but nothing a little needle and thread won't fix. Yes, we have to fill a bag with sorted items to weigh down that five kilogram weight. And we have already encountered the items that we are going to need. I think that's enough. Oh, two-thirds of the way full. Sure. So what the hell else am I supposed to put in it? Oh, just the flower that was probably in it to begin with. Yes, we need to turn on the water. But we needs us a ranch. Probably relates to the key that we got. I understand that some point clicks can get ex insanely complicated. Uh, the Deep Sleep series is not that complicated. But still, again, a good point and click follows a nice logical progression, and this game does follow a nice logical progression. You know, in the context of what it is. Things make sense. So, we have to go to all the valves and turn them on. Back down the Hall of Darkness. You know, it's funny that in order to avoid motion sickness, the VR controls work this way now. The more things change, the more they stay the same, it turns out. Hope that's not on. Ominous. So that one's on. I mean, for example, if you were paying attention to the background, as you should in any point and click, you notice the grate up there, That's it's literally shining beams of light down to draw your attention from the center of the screen up to the grate, because Script Welder knows what they're doing. So... Alright. We went down there, let's check up top. 
Well, I don't think there was a pipe here. And up nope, just the weird classroom. Gimme. Cody! Well, Cody is lost without his plushy tiger. But yeah, no, I think maybe we now just have to do the... the ones that are outside. Aziz Light! tamper with this just yet. I can make solving it a lot easier on myself. Oh! We found all of them. Oh, that's... I first encountered this phenomenon in the early 80s, but it would seem they have existed since the dawn of the human race. Commonly known as the Night Folk, or Shadow People, they live in the realm of dreams, but desperately want to get into our realm by possessing vulnerable, unoccupied bodies. As long as you don't know you're dreaming, you are safe. They attack when they sense a mind detached from its body, which sometimes happens during comas, but much more often during OOBEs, which is out-of-body experiences, and lucid dreaming. So they literally want to wear me like a cheap suit. Now that we have their motivation... Hey, this is my body. I stole it fair and square. I mean... Isn't this supposed to be doing a thing? Oh, no, I know, I know.
And I blundered my way into it. Holly fucking Luya. Probably gonna have to cut that out. That would took an embarrassingly long period of time to figure out. Whoopsie! So there's power now, because we've spun up the water wheel. And we don't have to worry about locating anything else. Oh. Bert seems displeased. We need a screwdriver. Just give me the flashlight. So we want to be quick through this part. All oh, right, there is an active antagonist. <laughs> They have to lean in so hard with the grudge look. I have rope. Bird's gone. Oh, right. Light. Oh, that's the Scarecrow access. That leads nowhere. Alright, so... Quick shot at this for anybody who may have missed it. Too quick to read it, man. The video head ass. Use the pause function. We need to go... deeper. Where were all of you hanging out during that whole experience? You realize I collected 15 pieces of paper and encountered two other people. You guys doing okay up there? You want a sandwich? Indeed it is. Well, at least uh, throughout all that, a young boy wakes up from a three-month coma, a nine-year-old boy from a local orphanage who has been in a coma since February woke up yesterday in good health. Doctors previously didn't give him much chance of ever regaining consciousness. Boy's first words were after opening... Boy's first words after opening his eyes were, My tiger has found me! You're welcome, kid! see you at the final tip. <laughs> yes, and at least there I won't be note hunting. Mind you, that wasn't the hard part. <laughs> Fucking valve puzzle. So yes, that's deeper sleep. Thank you all so much for watching. I will be finishing this series along with, because this is running around the time of Don't Escape. So I hope you come back for the end of it. And check out other videos I've done. Again, Flashpoint for playing Flash games. Um, I hope you're all staying happy and healthy out there, and as always, fare thee well.